We're here today at the launch of the Acoustics, Ventilation and Overheating Residential Design Guide. The guide has been produced by working group members from ANC member companies uh, with input from uh, other specialists in the field. The uh, AVO guide as a supplement to the earlier PROPG guidance produced by the ANC, IOA, CIH um, is going to be a really useful assessment tool that can help us to understand and to address the, uh, the overheating issues that we all face um, in the current climate. Moving forward, I think this guide is going to be vital for practitioners in the design of sustainable, resilient dwellings that we can adapt to future scenarios. What sets this guide apart and why it's taken four years really for us to produce it is it takes a proper holistic view of internal environmental conditions for occupants of dwellings. So it links noise and ventilation and noise and thermal comfort. And we haven't seen any other guidance internationally that does that in the way that we do. But what this guide means is that planners and environmental health officers will be able to refer to the guide and ask developers if their proposals for development take account of the design methods proposed in the AVO guide. There was two main reasons that we thought the guide was needed. Uh, one of those was that different local authorities put, took a different view to how developers should consider noise and ventilation in uh, the planning of residential developments and we thought it would be good to get some guidance out there so that everybody could be doing it consistently. And then in the course of this process we realised that actually the bigger question that we weren't answering at all, which is what happens when people open their windows to mitigate overheating. Through the course of writing the guide we realised that uh, usually the overheating assessments assume that windows are open to mitigate overheating, whereas usually in noise assessments people assume that windows are closed to mitigate noise levels. So this means that we weren't assessing the acoustic conditions when people use open windows to mitigate overheating. We just don't know what conditions those people are being exposed to and whether or not they're reasonable. Uh, so this seemed like it was a big omission in what we were doing as an industry and we wanted to put that right. I think one of the key issues is to educate other people that the guidance is available. Certainly I've been thinking while sitting in there today listening to the talks how useful this conversation this will be with some of the M&E engineers that we work with, working as part of a design team, not just looking at it with our single vision acoustic head on, that we also consider overheating internal air quality, which is something within our business we look at a lot, and really working as part of a design team, which is something acousticians have tried to do and, and to promote ourselves early in the design process and, and I think this guidance will certainly help to do that. The most pressing in, in issues I think for us are getting involved at the early stage, at REBA stage one. So often we get a design of a housing scheme that is so difficult to work with and it's too far down the line to then have an influence in it. So. Hopefully by promoting this guidance document, the role of acousticians will be seen a lot earlier. I think the issue of overheating is quite a huge problem that we have to address, more and more so in modern flats and particularly in urban locations. And urban locations tend to come with acoustic constraints of some sort. So evaluating how severe those are and whether they impact on our ability to ventilate using open windows is a big chunk of the jigsaw that we've needed for a while now and so it's really nice to see that being filled. <laughs>